Small Sword versus Spyhander. I know you do like to talk about me talking about the st uh, different strengths and weaknesses of different weapons and hey, you know, I enjoy making these videos as well. Let's go for some extremes. Small Sword versus Spyhander. Well, what strengths and weaknesses do they have? Well, some people would, probably any sport fencers out there would go, ah, well the, the small sword, um, you know, which is quite similar to a foil or an epee, is much, much faster. Is it faster? Well, if we measure the tip speed from there to there, bloom, I think we can definitely say that yes, moving from point A to point B, the small sword can move faster than the spy hander. I'm sure if you slow the video down, you can measure it here. So from point A oh, to point B. Oh. Now, you do have to think about leverage there. Whilst I can change the angle from, we say 90 degrees to zero degrees, much more quickly with the small sword than I could do with the two-handed sword. Um, because the two-handed sword is longer, the tip speed could potentially be faster. Now, this is a particularly heavy, heavy and sluggish two-hander. So, also you have to bear in mind, well, which specific, which specific small sword are we uh, using and which specific um, two-handed sword are we using? I could definitely find a quicker and more nimble two-handed sword than this, but generally speaking, I would say that um, the small sword is, is quicker at moving around in terms of angle, but in terms of tip speed, it might not always be the case. And there is a very important other factor. With having a longer lever comes longer reach. Now, we have to therefore think, is the nimbleness and is the speed of the small sword actually that relevant? Because the small sword can't reach me when I've got this, especially if I elect to not use it like a big chopping tool and instead follow Degrassi's advice, Giacomo Degrassi, and instead use it like a spear. Because then suddenly I've got an incredibly long tool with really good leverage that I can now actually become quite nimble with the tip with and move wherever I, wherever I want. And I can hit someone with this, assuming I keep it two-handed, I could extend the sword out um, one-handed. Yes, this is an eight pound side hander. I'm not showing off, that is oh, quite heavy. Uh, but um, I could reach someone boom, from, how tall is this? Well, I'm six foot one. So that's about five foot, isn't it? Okay, so I could reach someone from five feet away, and that's without moving my feet. If I lunge, it can be even further, okay? So I've got an enormous reach with this. So is the nimbleness of the small sword of any advantage at all? Because I'm limited in, in terms of speed of hitting my opponent by the speed of my feet, not by the speed of my hand, okay? And I'm not saying speed of the weapon is not important, it is but I've got to travel to my opponent in order to hit them. It's no use being able to move my sword around really quickly if my opponent's on the other side of the room and I can't reach them because they're pointing a spear at me, okay? So reach is really, really important. But there is another factor. Think about actually how this fight would pan out. What does the small sworder need to do to fight the person using the two-handed sword? They need to get close. To get close, what you've got to do is you've got to usually bind or occupy the opponent's weapon. Now, that's where the speed of the small sword could come in because if, if I'm really, really quick at moving my weapon around, I might be able to move my way in, weasel my way in, maybe threatening the opponent's hands on the way in, um, and then as they give me one big blow, catch it as I move in closer, and by catching and uncrossing, I might be able to catch them because my weapon's so quick. But can I catch their blow? That's the problem. So that's where it comes down to how the two-handed swordsman is fighting. If they are fighting using it as a spear, then indeed, maybe I can parry, so long as I parry with the base of my blade, the fort, called the fort because it's the strong, so long as I parry their thrust with the fort of my sword, I may indeed be able to catch it for long enough to form a barrier and charge into point blank range with my point. So it's not impossible, might be able to do it. But if they give massive great blows with the edge, what am I gonna do with my small sword? Don't parry it, don't try and parry it, you're gonna break your sword. 
If you catch it on the hilt, it's probably going to crush that hilt onto your hand. Um, just the weight difference, the mass, the, 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 the momentum of this, and trying to catch it with the lightest, light little weapon like this, really difficult. We're um, talking about a weapon that weighs about one pound, if I remember correctly, compared to a weapon that weighs like eight pounds. This is eight times heavier than this. Um, so, generally speaking, if they give you a whopping great blow, what's the small, small sword are supposed to do? Move out the way, <laughs> okay? Don't fall for that. So I think if you're the small sorter, what you're gonna want to do is avoid, 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 avoid. If they give you a thrust or even perhaps a light cut, a sniping cut, at that point you wanna catch the thing and charge at them. Get to point blank range and then this becomes a long rondel dagger. Okay, so this isn't useless. If you're the two-handed swordsman, what do you want to do? You want to keep the small sworder away. So long as they are at long range, you have all the advantages because you can reach them, they cannot reach you. But you mustn't let them close. And remember also, we both have another weapon we haven't spoken about yet. That's our bodies, okay? And principally, your other hand. So as soon as you get any kind of bind, the small sworder here has essentially a spare hand. As soon as they get any kind of bind or parry, they should be charging in with this hand and attempting to grab this weapon and occupy it for long enough they can start repeatedly stabbing. So going back to the spy hander person, um, you're going to be wanting to do cuts and thrusts and stuff. Don't overcommit, I would say, unless you start doing a montante-like um, flourish. Um, or Spadoni even, they have it in uh, Italian treatises as well, but it's most famous, should we say, in the Spanish and Portuguese material. You just start, I can't do it in here, obviously I don't have space, but moving the, I'll do it with an imaginary sword, moving the sword around in a continuous um, attack. But at some point you're going to get tired, and if they just keep backing off, you're not going to be able to bring them to combat like that. So, to sum up, even with small sword versus spy hander, oh, um, there are things that both people can do. It is not a forlorn hope. I do think that the Spyhander has the advantage because it's such a massive weapon and because the person with the two-handed sword can fight the small sworder at a distance where the small sworder can't reach to hit them back. So inherently the small sworder is going to be on the defensive from the outset, but they're going to be on the defensive looking for the opportunity to bring it to the offensive. Whereas really, in my mind, the person using the two-handed sword can dictate the fight. They can, they can choose how to fight. They can use thrusts and cuts in numerous ways. They can try sniping attacks and feints from a distance where they can risk it because the smaller sword can't quite reach them yet. So there are things that the person with the uh, two-handed sword can simply do that the small sword cannot do. Um, but the one final thing I would say is it's not really fair to compare these weapons because, of course, a small sword can be worn, at least if the law would allow it, can be worn anywhere. This is a sidearm, okay? This can be worn in any situation, comfortably, easily, and be by your side. The Spadone or the Montante or the Spyhander cannot. It can only be carried in your hand and is not practical to carry around and it is a pain in the ass to transport anywhere. Okay, um, so this, to all intents and purposes, really is practically a polearm. Um, so in that sense, sidearm, polearm, unfair comparison, but nevertheless it's a bit of fun, isn't it? And I do think that even if you find yourself with a small sword opposed against someone with a spadone or two-handed sword, there are things you can do that don't give up hope um, and try and think tactically and try and think about your strengths and their weaknesses. Cheers, folks. Chop, 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 chop. Chop, chop, poke, 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 poke. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, follow us on Facebook. You can buy t shirts through Spreadshirt, support us on Patreon, or follow us on Pinterest. Thank you.